Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to Writers and Books. My name is Dan Hurd. I'm the director of adult programs here. If you're not familiar with Writers and Books, um, we're a nonprofit literary arts center. Uh, we do readings, workshops, camps, uh, and literary programming for people of all ages and backgrounds. Um, find more information at our website, wav.org. Writers and Books would like to call attention to the complex and troubled history of the lands on which we live and work. We are hosting this event from the unceded ancestral homelands of the Onondaga, or the people of the Great Hill. In English, they are known as the Seneca people, or the keeper of the Western Door. So glad you could come out this afternoon on this cold uh, Saturday. Uh, this is the first in uh, a series we'll be doing every Saturday this month uh, with Almeida, our storyteller in residence, uh, and um, musicians Steve and Jaco in Brugia. Almeida Whitus is a renowned storyteller, theater artist, author, and poet who has taught on five continents. Her experience as an educator, university professor, and master teaching artists have resulted in many awards, among them Bike Delta Kappa's 1995 Lay Teacher of the, the Year, National Endowment for the Arts Most Skilled and Experienced Community Artist, and Governor Mario Cuomo's 1993 Decade of the Child Award. She is featured in Rochester Muse Museum and Science Center's Changemakers, 200 Rochester Women Who Have Changed the World exhibition. Please welcome uh, Elmina. That sounds so good. Even those of you who are watching it soon, we all sounded so good. <laughs> I'm Palmita Whitus, storyteller, culture keeper, and my good friend Steve and his son Jocko are uh, doing my percussion accompaniment today. And they're not just accompanying me, we are doing this as a Trio. It's going to be a really good thing. Oh, and there's lots of audience participation. Even those of you who are on uh, uh, whatever it is, Zoom, uh, yeah, just kind of go along with us at home, wherever you are. And um, we're going to start with the cake. In the beginning, we lived our lives by the beat of the drum. Its pulse, like the beating of a timeless heart, sustained us in cultivating the fields, fishing, herding, and performing ceremonies, raising roots, and hushing babies. 
the drum. The drum beat is, was, and will always be the blood and spirit of our people. Our drum is the state symbol of life, spirit, hopes, dreams, fears, longings, desires, and speech. Timelessness. Timelessness and the songs of our people. Ebony drum. The sound of it makes me whole. Rhythm and beat they claim to bless them. Oh, divine instrument of the spirit, let the most savage heart seek to hear it during the long travel back into yesterday i can hear the ebony drum play 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 allow the masses to feel your rhythm play allow the masses to feel your rhythm play, play. Inject the harmonious message within them. Play. Speak proudly of your people's foundations. Speak silent your delivery to all your nations. Let your universal voice sing. Let the cry for unity ring. Help us. Help us to remember one word. Help us to remember Mali. Help us to remember Zulu. Help us to remember Timbuktu. Enhance them to revere these legacies constructed by our distant mothers. Oh, everything drama. Keep us listening. that we may truly love one another. What are you doing? I said to the monkey as I watched him reach into the river and pull out a fish and gently lay it in the branches of a tree. I am saving it from drowning, was his reply. When somebody that's here, give me what you think that tiny story is about. Why would the monkey take the fish out of the river and put it up in a tree anyway? <laughs> That's a good answer. Because That's the a monkey good. thinks every animal breathes air like the monkey does. Exactly. Exactly. It's called assumptions. And sometimes assumptions can lead us onto a path that really isn't a good one to walk. So Storytelling forms like riddles and myths, and legends and stories, praise songs and proverbs, what we call wise sayings abound all over Africa. Some are actual happenings, others the product of fertile imaginations and handed down orally. Very useful for some of us today. These are some of the wise sayings I feel are appropriate for the young ones. You like that, don't you? <laughs> I knew you did. I saw that sparkle in your eye. <laughs> and the little cheek. So, okay. The ruin of a nation begins in the homes of its people. 
When you walk in the path of your mother, you will learn to walk like her. They who ask questions cannot avoid the answers. Knowledge is better than riches. Love is like a baby. It needs to be treated tenderly. No matter how long the night, the day is sure to come. Evil enters like a needle and spreads like an oak tree. They who learn, teach. When spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that one again, and then I want all of you to repeat it after me. So listen carefully. This is not a performance. We, we are all in this together, folks, OK? So when spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion, everybody. When spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. Now, really say it like you mean it. Come on. When spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. Oh, yeah, yeah. The fool speaks. The wise man listens. This one is so appropriate for this time in our country's history. If you offend, ask for pardon. If offended, forgive. Advise and counsel them. If they do not listen, let adversity teach them. A good deed is something one returns. They who give a gift, they don't measure it. They just give it. Indecision is like a stepchild. If they don't wash their hands, they are called dirty. And when they do, they are wasting water. Like that, too, didn't we? <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> Knowledge is like a garden. If it is not cultivated, it cannot be harvested. He who does not cultivate his field will die of hunger. The clan of I will do it was overtaken without having done it. Without life, there is <laughs> Ebony Drum, keep us listening so that one day we can truly love one another. I have to check to make sure I'm on target here because um, I have a feeling spirit is taking me somewhere else. So is it okay, Steve Jackal? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Follow me. All right. That's why I love Steve. He's been my drummer. Can I say how long? At least 30 years. But he's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A woman came out of her house and saw three old men with long gray beards sitting in the front yard. She did not recognize them. She said, I don't think I know you, but you must be hungry. Please come in and have something to eat. Is the man of the household, they asked. No, he's out then we cannot come in. In the evening, 
when her husband came home. She told him what had happened, and he said, go tell them I am home and invite them in. So the woman went out and invited the three men in. We do not go into a house together, they replied. Why is that? He wanted to know. One of the old men said, his name is Wealth, he said, pointing to one of his friends and pointing to another one. He is success. And I, I am love. Now, you go in and discuss with your husband which one of us do you want to invite into your home? Well, success, love. How many of you say, well, see your hands. Oh, good. How many of you say success? Raise your hands. Oh, we got a good audience. I hope y'all doing okay on Zoom. What about love? Ah, unanimous love. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Now, back to the story. The woman went in and told her husband what was said. Her husband was overjoyed. Well, oh yes, let him come in and fill our home with well. He disagreed. My dear, why don't we invite success in? And their daughter-in-law was listening from the other corner of the room and she jumped in with her own success the suggestion would it not be better to invite in love? Our home will then be filled with love. Let us hear our daughter-in-law's advice, the woman said. And the husband said, go out and invite love to be our guest. The woman went out and asked the three old men, which one of you is love? Please come in and be our guest. Love stood up and started walking towards the house. The other two also got up and started following him. And, and the surprised woman asked, wealth and success, I only invited love. Why are you coming in? And the all men replied together. If you had invited wealth or success, the other two of us would have stayed out. But since you invited love in, wherever he goes, we go with him. Wherever there is love, there is also wealth and success. There's a little wheel of turning in my heart. There's a little wheel turning in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. There's a little wheel turning in my heart. There's a little wheel turning. In my heart again, there's a little wheel turning in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, oh. there's a little wheel turning in my heart together last time. There's a little wheel turning in my heart. Can you sound like a Thank you, thank you. I got to see where we are. This is called Who Owns the Sun? It was written back in, I believe, the 80s. 
by a 14 year old white girl, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Stacy Chabosky. And it was part of the scholastic, uh, scholastic magazine writing contest for years. They invite young people in these different age categories to create a story and illustrate it. And Stacy won for the 14 year old group with this beautiful story, Who Owns the Sun? These are her illustrations. I will open them up and show them to you. I hope y'all can see that. Let me know. Yeah? Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking to them. They can. Yes. Yay! Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Right. It was 1987. She won. It was a warm April day, and my world now touched by the rays of the sun smelled so sweet. <laughs> the light fell across my face, and, and, and I felt warm. Clean. Mm. I asked my dad, Daddy, who owned the sun? <laughs> My, my father, he pointed up in the sky and he told me to look up and I, I raised up my head and I opened my eyes and I had to split them against the sun because its rays were so bright. And my father said, only a fool believes he can own the sun. Everybody sees the sun's light and everybody feels the sun's warmth, but the sun is too great, too large, too powerful to be owned by anyone. So it shines on all the earth and gives warmth and light to every living thing. I thought about what my father said, and I figured he must be right. And I believed him. So I watched him as he walked away from Victoria Field, went back to his work. Mm. That night, after my daddy worked hard all day, we sat on the porch and just let the night sounds come to us. Yeah. Oh, there. I could hear a cricket crying in the grass and over there. I could, I could hear something rustling around like it's trying to find the food. And, 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 and then the breeze made a brush past me. And the green leaves, they made a nighttime lullaby. Kind of get me ready for sleep. The black sky wrapped itself around us like a warm, soft musk muffler. And the peaceful stars glowed so clean and white, and they comforted me. So I leaned back in my chair for a better look. And then I thought to myself, so I asked my father, Daddy, who owns the stars? <laughs> my father said, the stars are too far away to be owned by anyone. No one has ever touched the stars, but everyone looks at them and everyone wonders at their beauty. The stars light up the night sky and shine for all people all over the world. Time passed, and spring gave way to summer. The rays of the hot sun burned deep into the ground, and, and, and in late July, a welcome rain fell on the earth and began to feel the stars that the sun had left behind, the, the thirsty ground that lay tracked and dusty spirals drank deeply and once again became a rich. So I asked my father, who owns the rain? 
no one owns the rain, son. As he scooped up a handful of moist earth and let the soil sprinkle through his fingers. Now, sometimes, son, the rain can be too strong and flood the land, but it can also be gentle and nourish the seeds in the ground. But the rain cannot be owned by anyone. It gives freely of itself and falls on every land all over the world. The next day, after the rain had stopped, the air again grew still and hot. And it was heavy and thick and seemed to smother everything it touched. It pressed out on my chest, making, making me long for a deep breath of pressure. You ever been so hot where the sun is like beating down on you? Like feel like you can't breathe? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I stayed inside that day, hoping for a cool breeze. And just before dinner, it came. I could feel it. First, there was a gentle stirring of the wind. And then soft breezes blew and began to push the hot air away. Mm -hmm. I, I filled my lungs and let the air cool my whole body. It was such a wonderful feeling. So I asked my daddy, daddy. Who owns the wind? Who? No one, said my father, as he turned to face that cool breeze. The wind is too mighty to be owned by anyone. Now, sometimes, son, the wind is moody and, 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 and has a temper tantrum. <laughs> and, and, and it whirls into a storm and thrushes everything in its path. And the wind can be funny. <laughs> have a sense of humor. It'll blow that hat right off your head and keep it. And other times, it can turn a windmill so it can help a man with his work. And sometimes it can be pleasant, like not. Cool us all. But no one owns the wind. It roams the earth. It's a wandering that visits everyone and every place. The next morning, I was sleeping. <laughs> Mom was naked. So I jumped out of bed and I washed my face and I put on my clothes and I ran down to the breakfast table and I sat down and then I heard way over there. Could hear a bird chirp. And then I heard another bird chirp. And, and then there were all kinds of birds chirping. <laughs> well, they sounded so sweet. So I asked my father, Dad, who owns the birds? Nobody can own the birds, my father answered. Everyone hears them sing their songs and everyone watches them soar and glide across the sky, but birds can fly. They can fly away at any time and go anywhere they choose. They are too free to be owned, son, and they share their beauty and songs with the whole world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was August. Wildflowers growing in the field behind the house. They brightened the summer with their colorful beauty. There were lavender ones and orange ones and yellow ones with the golden edges. But my favorite ones were the pink ones that, that bloomed in the, in the deepest sort of shade of, of rose I had ever seen. The flowers appeared so peaceful and at home in their beds. Only in midsummer, when the world was overflowing with flowers, I would allow myself to pick just a few, put it in a bouquet inside a glass jar, 
And I set it on the table for my mom. Mm. They looked so beautiful. And the house was filled with their fragrance. Dad, who owns the flowers? Son, a man can pick any flowers he chooses. But the flowers, they belong to the land. And the land was here long before man, and it will be here long after he is gone. Flowers give their beauty for all people to enjoy. And if we don't destroy the flowers, they will bloom and see that more flowers will grow in their place. I didn't understand all my father had said, but I believed him. I accepted it. He had told me that the world is full of beautiful things, things that cannot be owned, but that could be loved and appreciated by everyone. Now, I love my dad. His name is Big Jim, and he's tall, and he's big, and he's strong, and he has a kind heart. His huge hands are, are cracked and weathered by the sun and calloused by his work. But when he put his big hands over mine, they felt as warm and as gentle as my mouth's. My own hands are small and soft, but I would like to have hands like that one day. Strong and gentle. Now, I was not the only one who had respect for my dad. I noticed the way other men watched him as he worked. I knew how they sometimes counted on him for help. Yeah. Big Jim, he was taller and stronger than any of the other men. And, and, and when he bent over the plow and dug it into the earth, his muscles Framed and pressed hard against the cloth of his shirt. <laughs> and my father, he's so tall. I had to lean way back to get a good look at him. <laughs> but you know something? When I would look into my dad's face, all I saw in his eyes was just a love for me. His first born son. <laughs> Always a smile. Now, my mama cooked in Mr. Finley's big house for his family. And um, every day around noon, I would go into the big kitchen and breathe in the hot, steamy smile of pies and cookies baking. And my mother would fill a pail. She'd fill a pail with meat and beans and bread biscuits, and sometimes a piece of pie for my daddy's lunch. And then she would fill up a tall jug with cool, fresh buttermilk. Mm -hmm. And I would carry that pail and that jug, and I'd run to my father, who was working in the field. Now, my, 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 my errand, my errand was a labor of love, and I ran because I loved my daddy, because I know how hungry he would be because he worked hard. Across the field, I would race and never going, never slowing up my pace or stopping to look around. But one day in late April, the, the day was so hot and the air was so heavy. And I slowed down and walked part of the way instead of running like I normally do. And as I came to the east field, I heard the sound of men talking. When I drew near, I recognized Mr. Finley, the owner of the big house, and saw another man who, who was a stranger to me. I never saw him before. See that big fellow over there? I heard Mr. Finley say as he leaned against the fence. That there's Big Jim. He's a strong one, that man. So I realized Mr. Finley was talking about my dad. So I slowed my pace a little bit more. <laughs> so I listened to what they were saying. Mm. And then that man, the one I never saw before, he said, look at him lift those rocks. Oh, yeah. I helped feel proud. 
chest puffed out. Yeah, Mr. Fendi said, with that big old cigar he always carried. <laughs> big Jim, the best field hand I got. Wish I owned 10 more like him. Own? Own? I just, I just stood and I couldn't believe my ears. So then, oh, how did he say that? Oh, so I started running across the field for my dad. And, and the blunts was getting all mushed up in the pail and the buttermilk was sloshing out of it. And I ran and I saw my dad. And my dad, he had a big old stick and he had it pushed up under a boulder and he was pushing down on it to move that boulder. And my father saw me and he dropped the stick and he said, son, son, what is it, son? Daddy, daddy. Is it true? Is it true? Does Mr. Finley own you? And my father, he just hung his head. I said, Daddy, if no one can own the stock, and no one can own the son, how can Mr. Finley say he owe you? My father looked at me and he said, son, A man is a beautiful thing, a very beautiful thing indeed, but some men, son, they think they can own other men so they buy and sell them like cattle. But inside me, son, I am like that great sun in the sky. I am too great, too dark, too powerful to be owned by anyone. And then I knew I had to ask my father one more question. Daddy, did Mr. Finley own you? Does that mean he owned me too? And my father, he dropped down to his knees. And he began to cry. It's the only time I've ever seen my daddy cry. It wasn't, it wasn't too long afterwards where we was free. My mama, the daddy, my sister, and me. But we went to school, and when we grew up, my sister, she become a nurse, and I, Go teach because education is the seed. Late lessons, but a lesson learned indeed. And I know that my daddy was right. No man, no person has the right to own another person. And that we are all together because when you invite love into your house wealth and success follow not necessarily monetary wealth it's all kinds of wealth in this world I invite you to see the ways you can invite love, wealth, and success 
into your world. The song that we're about to sing, Who Owns the Sun, was written by another musician and teacher friend of mine. Stephen Berger is a retired music teacher with Rochester City School District. Oh. On and off. Thank you. I know how that goes. <laughs> and um, the, uh, this Who Owns the Sun was written by my friend and colleague Tom Dunn. He was an elementary school teacher at Palmyra Elementary School. And he heard me tell this story for um, a statewide conference for teachers in Albany, New York. And he wrote the song. And I'm like, ooh, can I use it? It's a real good song. Can I use it? And he's like, sure. So Steve and Jocko were going to try and sing it. I usually sing it a cappella. And they're going to do this wonderful accompaniment with me. Who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It belongs to all of us, everyone. Who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It will always be this way. Who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It belongs. It belongs to all of us, every, everyone. Who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It will always, it will always be this way. I woke up this morning. What did I hear? Birds singing everywhere. Songs will be eight. So I looked outside my window and I smiled at the sight. Please, Daddy, tell me. Set my mind right. I'm back. Who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It belongs to all of us. Everyone. Who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It will always be this way. The long walk, some rich man's fence. Isn't he the same as me? It just makes no sense. Who can stop the water? And who makes the rain? Nobody has the right to steal another man's name. I'm back to the who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It belongs to all of us, everyone. Who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? It will always be the sun. It will always be the sun. It is always be this way. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the first of our regular Saturdays in February where all of you are welcome to please come out and enjoy working with us. And um, we got one little thing at the end because it's audience participation. We've got some handheld instruments over here. And I would like for some brave ones to come up and learn a ring shop dance. It's very simple. It's very easy. It comes from Africa. The Africans brought it on those slave ships over here, and we mainly use it in the Black church. It's called a ring shop. 
So we're going to learn the song and we're going to learn the dance. And I'm actually, I'm only a few of us in person, so please help us out with this. We're going to learn the song first, okay? <laughs> He's my rock, my sword, my field. He's the wheel in the middle of a wheel. My Lord can and said he will fight my battle if I just stand still. That's it. Let's try it. We'll pass it a few times. He's my rock, my sword, my steel. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. My Lord can and said he will fight my battle if I just stand still again. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. My Lord can and said he will fight my battle if I just stand still. One more time, I want to hear you. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. My Lord can and said he will fight my battle if I just stand still. Okay, I need a couple of them. Um, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I can't do a ring shout by myself. It's a ring. It's supposed to be a ring. Really still with me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's make our little circle here. Let me stay right here. Yeah. Okay. That's how it's done. Yes. We're going to go. Okay. That's the first one. So we step out to the right and we flex our thighs twice. Ready? So feet together. And we're going to go this way. So you're coming this way. Okay. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. My Lord, everybody, he's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. My Lord can and his will. My battle is for dust and once more. He's the one that rocks the sword rock shield. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. My Lord can and can be will. My battle is for dust and Battle if I just end it. Battle if I just end it. That's it. I'll oh, do it. Okay, thank you. And your name is? Sophie. Oh, you know what that means. Here, you got to introduce yourself too. Oh, Sophie. That was powerful names. And we have. Allison. Allison, and we have our people out here and our people out there, hopefully. And it gives everybody a hand. <laughs> Thank you all. You may have a seat. Oh, you're welcome. I had fun. I hope you did. And please, each week, there's different stories, different topics, different themes, all coming from Black history, Black culture, and others. One of those stories came from one of the African diaspora peoples. So I'll let you decide which one, because I only told two. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Writers and Books. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Allison. Thank each and every one of you for coming out on this very chilly day. Thank you for those of you who are watching at home. Please come back again. You can sign up and just uh, look at the uh, Writers and Page, Writers and Books 
page about this February story series in honor of Black History Month. Did you enjoy yourselves today? Yes. Good great, great. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. Can you say that loud? Very much. Your voice is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Sophie said, what did you just say? I like that. All right. Thank you, Sophie. You too? All right. And who are you? Oh, the Oh, Olivia. Thank you. I want to hear out of one ear. That's why I messed it up. Olivia, you have a beautiful name as well. And I'm so glad that you enjoyed yourself. What about you, my friend? Wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you. And my mountain man, I call Daniel my mountain man because he looks like he's either in the Adirondacks or the Rockies. <laughs> And I've been calling him Mountain Man since he started growing that beard long before there was a pandemic. And uh, he allowed me to call him my Mountain Man. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan, for introducing the uh, program today. And thank you, Allison, for opening the doors of Writers and Books so that, so that Rochester can enjoy, come together as a family and enjoy stories. And as you can see, I don't just tell. Y'all have to help me. And of course, let's give thanks to my musicians, Steve and Zato and Rosa. <laughs> Thank you all. And that's it. Am I on time? You're good. Really? Yeah. How much how, how much did I go? I know. Get out of here. Oh, thank you, Spirit, because I'm usually late getting here and late finishing. So thank you all so much. Please come back next Saturday and the three Saturdays after that. Thank you. Peace and blessings. I never say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.